Hi everyone, new type of video here. I'm talking and as you can see, I'm out doing some off-road riding. It's winter, it's kind of cold, but perfect time for that. It's my beautiful Battle Scarred XD600. So I got this question asked a lot. What did I do with my exhaust on the VFR? Unfortunately, I wanted to do this video on with the VFR, but turns out it became winter so I couldn't really do that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show what exactly I did with the exhaust of the VFR to sound the way it does which I think is kind of cool and right ahead I have to say I didn't make a video of it because uh, it was just a project for me I wasn't really doing videos back then so I just made some pictures and I'm gonna show them. The first thing I want to talk about is the two main types of exhausts used on motorcycles. And the first one is reflection and the second one is absorption. And reflective mufflers are the ones that are usually welded from sheet metal and they have these baffles in them or little chambers that the gas is forced to go through and during this process it, the pressure waves get uh, reflected on each other and they cancel each other out and in general the gas as it goes through these these chambers loses the energy and then the sound is dissipated. I think the stock exhaust of the XD had four baffles and by four baffles I mean the gas was forced to change directions, turn around fully like 180 degrees four times so you can imagine how much it depletes the energy of the gas if it has to go like this four times and then come out and it was a very quiet muffler as well and the other type is absorption muffler which is the basic type you can buy in aftermarket end cans so like Akrapovich, Yoshimura stuff like that in general, I'm not saying always, but in general, they're all very similar. They have a straight tube right through them, which has a lot of holes punched in it. So it's like a perforated tube. Then it, it has the outer shell and in between it has a packing material. And what that does is as the pressure waves come through this inner tube, the pressure wave can go outside through these perforations and as it goes outside it hits this packing material and it absorbs a lot of the energy so that's why it's called absorption muffler okay so i i thought it would be better if i illustrated this concept so let's look this is the two types of exhaust i was talking about reflective and absorptive absorptive and we look at the reflective one is actually some chambers made of sheet metal and these are the chamber walls we call them baffles and the gas comes in and is forced through these passages, has to change directions a lot of times, and that bleeds its energy. And also it's important, the more gas, the more velocity you have, it's the harder it gets to change directions. So actually reflection muffers work stronger on the higher revs and the high power. This plot is on the x-axis, there is load, which in case of a naturally aspirated petrol engine, like a bike engine, it's RPM times throttle, and this is volume. This is not decibel, not pressure, not anything like that. Let's say it's the perceived volume, the perceived loudness of an exhaust when you're standing next to it. So let's just, it's, it's just fine for our purposes, not really scientific. The straight line is no muffler case. So this is like when you have the exhaust manifold and there's no muffler. And let's say the plot is, draw, is drawn is in a way that the no muffler case is the straight line. So let's just, we can compare the others to the straight line. So as we can see, this reflection muffler starts out increasing with increasing volume, but as the load increases, the volume doesn't increase that much. So the curve is curved downwards. It, it still goes up at this point, but the rate at which it goes up decreased because the reflection muffler is working stronger on the high load high gas velocity and this arrow means if you are increasing the number of baffles the number of direction changes then 
this curve goes down like that. The other plot is back pressure. So back pressure is like the pressure drop you need to force all, all that gas through the exhaust uh, muffler. So this is like the pressure here compared to the pressure here. It's an easier way to put it. And as we can see, the back pressure is curved outwards in the case of a reflection muffler because it's increasingly hard to force the increasing amount of gas through these passages. And that's why the curve it goes upwards. And if you increase the number of baffles, the curve goes up more aggressively. Absorption buffer is, as I said, is like a straight pipe with a lot of holes punched on the wall. And then it has some packing material between the, the, the muffler wall and this in, inside, inside pipe. And the gas comes in and the pressure waves are going up, out through these perforations and they get dissipated in the packing material, which is in most cases glass fiber. In my case, it's actually like metal fiber, but it works the same. And it's very different from this case, this plot, because the, the absorption muffler on the lower revs and, and let's say idle, it's actually pretty quiet because these, these holes work a lot better on the lower revs. And that's why if you have a sporting exhaust, so this is like a sport exhaust aftermarket, and this is a stock exhaust of basically anything. And if you, you have a sport exhaust, it can actually be pretty quiet on the lower revs <clears throat> because this packing material works very, very well on the lower revs. But as you increase the load, it stops working that much. And actually the curve converges to the no muffler case and this is this is like on the highway when when the sport exhaust is screaming like hell so it's very different from here and if you increase the, the amount of packing material or the length of the muffler this curve goes more and more down but the end is always the same it, it starts to converge to the more to the no muffler case back pressure is very minimal Actually, it, this might not even be correct compared to the other one. This may be much lower, but it's easier to see like that. So some back pressure is created, but then it doesn't really increase much. And this is actually dangerous because if you decrease the back pressure without adjusting the, the injection mapping or the carb jetting, you can actually burn the exhaust valve. So this part here protects the exhaust valves. This part here doesn't, so you have to adjust the mixture. Another thing about the absorption muffler is that it has a very, very pleasant soft sound as long as the packing material is, is functioning. So here it's actually very, very soft sounding. It's not here, but here it is. So actually what I wanted to have is something like this, this lower. So I wanted to have some volume that doesn't really increase so much on the higher load because I don't want to go deaf on the highway. And I want it to have some nice sound on the lower revs, some more sound on the higher revs, but not too much. So actually you could say that, okay, just cut out these baffles and then go with one baffle, leave the rest empty, and then it will be just fine. It's actually not the case because if, if you're constructing the entire exhaust from sheet metal and you don't put too many baffles in it, it starts to be a fart can. So if you ever heard like a junkyard Honda Civic speeding down the road and having an exhaust that was cut open or there's rusted through or something, this, that is like the classic fart can. And if you just build an exhaust with one baffle and nothing else, it will be a fart can. So I wanted to have sound suppression on the high load this pleasant sound well preferably all over but at least on the lower revs and some back pressure to protect the valves these are the three things i wanted so this is my exhaust in a cross section gas comes in this is one baffle and an absorption part and this is a big hole and this is a piece of wedge shaped steel welded into the hole so this is a baffle but it's very easy to go past this baffle and that's the point. I wanted to have something to break the sound waves and something that creates back pressure, but not, not too much of it. So this is what I, what I said earlier. 
basically the one baffle case is what I wanted. But after that, I also have an absorption part responsible for the pleasant soft sound on, well, all throughout the range, but most importantly on the lower revs, low power. As you can see on the lower revs, it has the characteristics of an absorption muffler because this wedge is very easy to pass if the gas is moving slowly. So it acts like it wasn't even there. And therefore, this lower part is basically an absorption muffler. But if you increase the gas velocity, then this wedge starts to be increasingly hard to pass for the gas because it needs to pass it very quickly. So it starts to create sound suppression that reflection mufflers do. And th therefore, if it was just the absorption one, this curve would converge to the no muffler case but instead it drops off from it. So this is the highway again, and this is the part when, I, when I'm not going deaf on the highway. This is what I wanted. This is a soft sound on low revs, and this is the not going deaf thing on the high power. And as, uh, as for the back pressure, as you can see, the curve starts again out like an absorption muffler, but then it starts to curve up, and the back pressure is actually created by the wedge again on the high loads and this is what protects the valves so this was the basic idea and it worked so the valves are fine i didn't adjust the mixture at all and the spark plugs have the same color so it works and it has the pleasant sound on the lower revs and uh, the sound suppression on the higher revs so oh. original muffler modified muffler as you can see it's it's a bit shorter otherwise it's the same uh, this was actually the original muffler for this bike but it was in kind of a bad shape for this project first I wanted to buy another original muffler so I still can fit it if it needs to pass some inspection or if I just mess it up I actually managed to buy one that was in much better shape than its original so I cut the original and kept this new one intact and like I said like there is the wedge in a big hole and <clears throat> there's the packing material with the perforated tube uh, please don't mind this screw this was my idea how to fit a DB killer and I actually did but it looks kind of awful, so I'm not really proud of that. So, yeah, and the welds are not really nice. This was my first project with the TIG welder, so is what it is. Works fine, and it was riveted back, so I can open it up again. Those are stainless steel rivets. Those are much stronger, but and they look cool, but yeah, rivets. And actually, these were the welds I was talking about. It's pretty hard to drill these because they are large and they go very deeply. So there is like three or four layers these welds are holding together. So it was kind of a nightmare to drill them. And I actually needed to cut this part because it it was so much destroyed that there, there was no point keeping it. So. That's why this muffler got shorter. It was a fun project. I just made a DB killer for it, spring loaded, so I don't need to mess with some screws or anything and just pop it in, pop it out, works perfectly. I think that's all. So I hope you, well, if not enjoyed, at least found informative this video. And it was an interesting experience for me. I never did that before. Not sure if I'm going to do it ever again, but it was fun. So with that, thanks for watching and bye.